Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about the analysis of pedigree chart. A pedigree chart is a diagram of a family tree showing phenotypes and or genotypes for a particular abnormality or disorder of genetic origin. It relies on information provided by the proband, so the person who asks for the diagram to be done, and his or her family. And the correctness of this information is the base of accuracy of the chart. So the more information there is and the more accurate the information is, the more accurate will the result be. One of these pedigree charts is usually done to determine the probability that either the proband, him or herself, or his or her possible offspring are affected of a genetic disorder or abnormality. Further factors for inaccuracy are incomplete penetrance, age of onset and variable expressivity of the disease alleles. Incomplete penetrance is when some individuals carry a pathogenic gene but do not express the associated phenotype. And variable expressivity is that people with the same genotype can have milder or more severe forms of the same disease. Age of onset means that people are not necessarily born with the specific traits for a disease, but they might develop them later, like for example in Huntington disease. There are also different types of inheritance. I talked about those in the genetic series before, so if you haven't seen those videos yet, you can go back and watch them first. So I'm just gonna mention the names and how it will look in the pedigree chart. If the trait is dominant, then one of the parents must surely have it. And if the trait is recessive, then skipping of generations is frequently seen, as there might be carriers who are heterogeneous and only carry the gene and then pass it on to their children who then might give it on again so that they have the gene but do not express it. In X-linked recessive traits, males are much more frequently affected. This is due to the chromosome combination of X and Y, but also that I explained in another video. In autosomal traits, males and females are equally likely affected. For the pedigree chart, we use a specific set of symbols which is internationally recognized. So males are indicated with a rectangular shape and females with a round. If the gender is unknown, but there was known that it was, for example, a sibling or uh, some other kind of relative, then it's just like the male, but turn around 90 degrees. You can see that there's also a possibility to indicate if one of the children was adopted, if one of the people of the family tree was deceased, and also we indicate if a person was affected or is a carrier, if that's known, by filling in the shape of the gender. We can also symbolize the different re relations to each other, if they're either married or divorced, if they're siblings, or if there's maybe a marriage between cousins then we indicate it by a double line. Also twins can be indicated, either monozygotic and dizygotic, so an origin of one or of two eggs. Then I drew an exercise, just if you may be curious to try how to write one of those pedigree charts. So we have a two-year-old girl, she is the proband, so she will be indicated with an arrow. And she has a five-year-old brother and a nine-year-old sister. Usually when we have people of the same generation who are siblings to each other, then we start with the youngest one on the left side, so our proband will be on the left side, then the five-year-old brother and then the nine-year-old sister on the right side. Then her parents' first child is adopted, so the nine-year-old girl, she is adopted. And the mother of the proband has a sister who is married and has monozygotic twin boys. So you can check again in the overview of the set of symbols how we will indicate that. The father of the proband has a brother whose wife is pregnant. When someone is pregnant, we indicate it by writing a P into the shape. It doesn't really matter if it's a circle or sometimes it's also seen that it's one of the rhomboid shape and then a P in the inside, so that varies internationally. But if it's a circle or a rhomboid shape, doesn't really matter. Just indicate it with a P and then it's clear. And then the grandmother on the mother's side, 
and the grandfather on the father's side are siblings and both of them are deceased. When we now think about that of the grandparents of the proband, the children are married, then we have to remember to indicate that in the scheme also, that we have here a relationship between people that are related to each other in the first or second degree. I hope everything was clear. If you have questions to the exercise, you can write it in the comments or write in the comments if you liked a video and understood everything. And I would be also very happy about a subscription. That's it for now. Feel free to also click on the other videos.